Dude? Yeah. Where's the pie? Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So the other day I was looking for a single location with information on pie menus in Blender, and I'm sure it's out there, but I couldn't find it. So I thought I'd make a video showing the default pie menus Blender has, and then an add-on Blender comes with that'll provide you additional pie menu options. In addition to that, I've also created a shortcuts guide that I've put on Gumroad for free, and I'll include a link in the description. So if you want to download that as a guide, that's available. So I'm just going to run through these quickly and discuss what they do. And then again, you can follow along with the guide if you need to. So here I'm in Blender 3.6.0 and I don't have anything unusual installed or any add-on. So we should be looking at the same thing. So let me click into the viewport to get rid of the startup screen. The first pie menu I want to discuss is the mode pie menu. So right now, if you're in object mode and you hit tab, it'll take you automatically to edit mode. And you can just switch between those two. But if you hit control tab, it gives you a pie menu that gives you all the modes you can access. So if I want to go into weight painting mode, I can do that. Or I can go back to edit mode. Now one interesting thing about this one is I click on this. If I go to edit mode, I can also select which edit mode will be taken into immediately. Because normally I'd go to edit mode and then you have to choose vertex, edge, or face after that. But from here... You can just pick one, it takes you to edit mode and automatically has you in that mode. So in all these, I wanna mention that if you wanna cycle through these quickly, you can click on control tab and you'll see a number next to that. So if a control tab and then eight, I can be quickly taken to object mode or control tab nine, I can quickly be taken to vertex paint mode. So this will be true for all the pie menus in Blender. So if you memorize those numbers, you can quickly bring up the pie menu, then immediately hit the number and be taken to where you wanna go which is a lot quicker than manually changing into what you need to do or bring up the pie menu and then choosing from it. So, and I'll admit, I don't have those numbers memorized. It's something I hope as I use these more, that's something, you know, I have muscle memory for. But still, being able to bring up the pie menu and choosing from that is quicker than just, you know, like going up here and choosing a mode from here. So the next one I want to discuss is proportional editing fall off. If I go to edit mode and I highlight this vertex here, if I grab it, you can see it's just moving that one vertex like you would expect. So proportional editing will pull additional areas with that. So to turn on proportional editing, the shortcut is O. And you can see that's up here. You can see that's blue now. I can also tab it on and off here, but the shortcut is O. With it on, I would normally come up to this drop down and choose one, but I hit shift O, it brings those up for me, and then I can choose which one I want to use. So if I choose smooth and then hit G to grab it, you can see I now have that circle around it. And if I roll my mouse forward or backwards, I can increase that area of influence. So see how it's moving a lot of the geometry with it rather than just that one point? So I'm going to hit control tab and go to object mode. I'm going to delete that cube and I'm going to hit shift A to bring up my add menu and I'm going to choose the UV sphere. I'm going to S to scale that. I'm going to go to edit mode by hitting tab. Now I've got everything selected. I'm going to right click and hit subdivide. So I've got that subdivided. So now I'm going to scroll in and just choose this one vertex here. So now you can see our proportional editing still on. Again, that's O to turn it on and off. So I'm gonna hit Shift O and choose, we'll just stay on smooth for now. And if I had G to grab that, now you can see the power of proportional editing. So if I really wanted to stretch this up, I can do that. Hit G again, pull that over. So it's kind of similar to sculpting. So that's what that pie menu does for you. So I'm gonna hit O to come out of proportional editing and I'll hit tab to come back into object mode and you see what we've got. So the next one I wanna discuss is snapping. So to turn snapping on and off, you can hit shift tab. You can see up here at the top that turns blue. I can turn it off. And then if I left click on here, you can see what I can snap to. So to get that menu, I want to click on the cube and hit tab to enter edit mode. I'll left click and drag this vertex. And then you can see snapping's on. 
So I'm going to hit Control Shift Tab, and that gives me my Snap to. I'm going to choose Vertex. And I'm going to hit G to grab this Vertex I've got selected, bring that over, and you can see it Snap to it. I can also hit 2 to go to Edge Mode, select that Edge, Hit Control Shift Tab, click Edge, then hit G to grab that edge and bring it over. And you can see that snap to it. The next one I'll discuss is called the Snap Pie Menu, but I don't want you to get confused with the Snapping Pie Menu. If I hit Shift S, you can see I have all these options for selection to cursor, selection to active, selection to grid, cursor to active, cursor to selected, cursor to world origin, cursor to grid, selection to cursor. So I won't go through what all these mean, but these are very helpful and I use them quite frequently. As an example, if I go up here and click and choose the cursor, I can now click around and drag if I want to my 3D cursor. So let me delete this cube. So I like to model on the world origin. So currently, you can see my cursor is not there. So let me click over here. So if I hit Shift A to bring up my Add menu and I select Cube, you can see my cube is there. And that's not what I want. So I can hit Shift S and choose Cursor to World Origin. And now you can see my cursor snaps to that. And then I can hit Shift A, Mesh, Cube, and now my cube is at the World Origin. So another handy option, and again, I won't cover all these, but I'll just show you another example. If I hit Shift A and I go to Mesh Cube, and if I hit Tab to go into Edit Mode, and I'm in Edge Mode, say I want to add another object to this cube, so I can highlight that edge, then if I hit Shift S, I can put Cursor to Selected. So you can see the cursor has attached itself to that edge that I'd highlighted. So now if I hit Shift A and choose UV Sphere, you can see the UV Sphere was added with its middle point exactly where that 3D cursor is. So another option, let me come out of Edit Mode by hitting Tab. If I click the 3D cursor up here, and then I have the cube selected, if I hit Shift S, I go to Selection to Cursor, you can see the cube moves to the cursor. So there's really a lot of functionality here that you can play with that helps you get things aligned and moved around. So I use this option, Shift S, more than anyone on here other than possibly the Mode Pie menu. So the next one I want to talk about is the Pivot Point Pie menu. So that is a period. So if I hit period, you can see what comes up, and that's medium point, only locations, 3D cursor, individual origins, bounding box, center, active element. And what this is is the same menu you see up here. So as an example, let me go into edit mode, and I'm going to select this vertex. And I want to turn on my 3D gizmos. So that's this drop down here. And I'll just use the move one. So see how it's currently selected to that. If I select everything, and then I go to the period key, I can select where that gizmo shows up. So if I hit bounding box, it centers itself to that selection. Hit it again, I can choose the 3D cursor, and I can see the gizmo moved where the 3D cursor was. Okay, the next one I want to discuss is the transform orientation, and that's the comma key. So transform orientation is a way to configure how the transformations are occurring. And you have a couple of different options, such as global, which is aligns it to the axis of the world space, local, which aligns it to the selected object's local space. So the way you use this is going to vary depending on your needs. So next one I want to discuss is the snap to view. And this is handy, especially if you don't have a numpad. I have a numpad, so I use it to change my views but you can use this, and it's the acute key, which is the top left above the tilde. So if I click that, you can see I can just quickly change views. So that's a handy way to navigate, like I said, especially if you don't have a numpad. The next one I want to discuss is the tools pop-up, and that's shift spacebar. So you can see I'm currently in object mode, and these are the options I can choose from. And this is mode sensitive, so if I click control tab to choose a mode, and I choose edit mode, and then I choose shift Spacebar, you can see I have a different set of tools from there. So it's a quick way to access these rather than going to the left of your viewport. And the last one I want to discuss in the standard default pie menus is Quick Favorite. So it's not exactly a standard pop-up, but it is a pop-up that I think is helpful. 
So if you click your Q key, you get your quick favorites. And currently I don't have anything saved, so I'll click out of that. So as an example, if I want to right click on cursor, I get this option, add to quick favorites. So I can click that. And then if I add annotate, I can add to quick favorites. And then measure, I'll right click that. So now if I hit Q, you can see I have all these available to me. And I can also right click to remove those if I want to do that. So this is mode sensitive as well. So if I hit tab to go to edit mode and hit Q, you can see I have render image here. That's the only favorite I've got set. So if I go back to object mode and hit Q, you can see it's the menu that I just set up. So that is mode sensitive. So you can customize those for each mode. This is especially handy if you use a lot of the same shortcuts all the time and you prefer a pop-up menu rather than knowing a keyboard shortcut. So you can quickly add those here. And again, you can quickly delete them if you want to. Okay, so that takes care of the default Pi menus. So you do have an option of additional Pi menus. I'm gonna go on a limb and guess that you like pies. To enable those, just go to Edit, Preferences, and with Add-on Selected, type in Pi. And you can just click this Interface 3D Viewport Pi Menus, and that'll give you some additional Pi Menu options. So if you click the drop-down, you can click on the Documentation tab, and that'll bring up a website providing that additional information. So the first one is the Animation Pi Menu, and that's Shift Spacebar. Now you do lose your access to the tools pie menu if you enable that add-on because shift spacebar in the default is the tools menu. But if you enable that, shift spacebar becomes the animation pie menu. So if I click on shift spacebar, I can choose how to play through the timeline. So I have play, next frame, jump to a frame, keyframe menu. And you see if I hover over that, I get additional options. Reverse, auto keyframe, I can toggle that on and off here. Jump, rewind, previous frame, play. And if I hit play, play now turns to stop. The next one I want to show you is apply transforms. So to show an example of that, I want to take this cube and drag it up and over. Then I open this menu over here and you can see my location has changed. If you want to zero out those transforms, you can use this pie menu to hit control A and you can choose you know, rotation, location, apply visual, make instances real, rotation, scale, clear, transform menu. And then if you hover over that, you have some options. So say I click that, transform, clear all. See my cube moves back. So let me move it again. And I'll hit control A, and then I'll hit apply all. And you can see those zeroed out. So I can move it again. So that's changed, control A, apply all. They've zeroed out. So the next one I want to discuss is the align option. This one allows you to align vertices, edges, or faces to each other. So if I click tab to go into edit mode, say I select these two vertices, you can see those are in the X axis and I can see that up here on the right. So if I hit Alt X, I can choose align to X and you can see it aligned those and centered them between each other. So let me hit undo on that. So if I go to edge mode, I can select this edge and this edge and hit align to Y and it'll bring those together. So you see that's a handy way to move points, vertices, and faces around. So let me go to faces and I'll select that face, select that face, and there on the Y axis, so I'll hit Alt X, align to Y, you can see it flattened it. Now it didn't merge them or delete anything. So you can see the way that looks, those are two faces right on top of each other. So that's just something to keep in mind. The next one I wanna discuss is the delete, which gives you additional options for deleting vertices, edges, or faces. So if I left click and drag and choose this vertices and I hit X, now I have this pop-up menu, delete vertices, delete edges, delete faces, dissolve faces, dissolve edges, dissolve vertices. And then I have a couple of different options based on how that works. So if I hit delete vertices, you can see it deleted that vertices. And since that vertices was the center point for those faces, it removed those two. So if I left click and drag to select that edge, I can hit X, delete edge. And you can see it deleted that edge, but it kept that vertices. So I can just hit X, delete vertices. So that just gives you some extra delete options. 
So the next one's kind of interesting. This is the editor switch. So if I hover over my timeline here and hit Control Alt S, it gives me some editor options. So say I've got my timeline here, but then I want to go to the node editor and then I hover over that, I can choose shader and now I'm in the shader editor. So that's especially handy if you don't want to go over here and choose from this drop down. So again, I can hit Control Alt S and I can go back to my timeline. So to do that, I go to animation editors and I can choose timeline. So again, it's very handy if you want to change a different editor. So you're just hovering where your mouse is and then choosing from that menu. So on this one, I'm in edit mode and this one is called the manipulator menu and it's alt space bar. So this just changes what you're doing. So say I turn off my gizmo. I'm going to highlight that vertices and hit alt space bar and I can choose translate and that gives me the translate option. Let's say I choose, I hit three to go to faces, choose that face and then hit rotate and that gives me the gizmo there. And when you highlight something, it shows the last one used. So if I alt space bar and choose scale, you see I've got the scale option here. If I click and drag to unselect that and then I select another one, you can see I now have that one back. So it does show you the last one used. However, you can just hit alt space bar and choose show or hide to toggle that. Next one I want to show you is the origin. So if I hit control alt X, you can see origin to selection, origin to geometry, geometry to origin, origin to center of mass, origin to cursor, origin to bottom. So you can see if I select origin to bottom, that's where it ends up. Then if I hit S to scale, I'm scaling from that point. So let me hit Control Alt X again and origin to geometry, and you can see it jumps to the middle. If I hit scale, it's scaling from that point. So then say I select the cursor option and I select the cursor here. Then I control alt X and I choose origin to cursor. Now if I scale it, it's going to scale from that point. So next one I want to show you is the save open option. And that kind of gives you some file options you don't typically have access to in the viewport. So if I hit control S, so you can see I now have open menu option, which is open a file or open recent. I can hit save. I can create a new file. I can import, export, recovery menu, link menu. So this is just a quick way to access that information instead of having to go up here to the top. The next one is specific to sculpt. So if I go to sculpt mode and I hit W, I have access to a limited number of sculpt tools, but these are the ones that are used most. Then if I hover over more brushes, you can see those. If I hover over grab brushes, you can see those. So this is just a quick access to the sculpt tools. So the next one is handy. This is the select pie menu. If I hit a, I can choose how my selection is going to occur. So I can choose select circle. You see, I can select those. So while in edit mode, I can hit A and that'll bring that up. And I can hit select all or box select. And I can choose what I'm selecting. So let me sec select one vertices and I'm going to hit A and select more. And you can see it increase the number of vertices selected. And I can hit A again and select less. And it'll decrease that. I can hit invert selection and it'll select everything that wasn't originally selected. So it gives me access to my selection options rather than having to select one of these and then changing the mode here. So the next one's handy and that's the shading menu. So if I hit Z, I can choose how this is shaded. So that's a quick way to change the shading method while you're in the viewport. And the last one I want to show you is the view numpad option. And it's pretty much similar to the snap to view option. So if I hit alt Q, I can choose my viewport. And this simulates using the same as the numpad. So you can check out those options there. It's just a quick way to navigate the scene. So if you found this video helpful, if so, please like and subscribe. And don't forget that you can download this guide for free from Gumroad and the links in the description. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.